Hello everyone. Today I have a very unusual guest on my bench and it's BMW Media Unit. I was requested to take a look if I can fix it. So that would be my goal to open it, make sure that CPU works, uh, signals other supply power and see like check capacitors and see like what else can fail there and i'm not sure if i would be able to fix it i didn't do it before but i've been promised that uh, i will get the schematic so we have a pretty good chance so stay tuned and let's see what i can do with this guy Oh yeah, I have opened it from the top and from the bottom. Top cover has just three screws and it covers a uh, DVD drive here. It's a power supply board. And I may think about it, may also have the power amplifier. For the sounds, this side looks to be digital part. All right, but here is the main part we interested. It's the main CPU. It has a memory here, clock generator. So far, everything looks good. I don't see any sign of deterioration. All right. And this is the cover. Nothing special about it. All right, let me dig in and see if anything I can find. But that's where like, uh, we need to take a look and see. Probably schematic would be preferable to understand what every chip does. You see Samsung memory for ARM. All other chips, I'm not quite sure what those are, considering these abbreviations. All right. Let's look like another high precision generator. Right here. All right. Okay, let me see more, and I will keep you updated. See you. No, you guys, I'm get pretty far with my disassembly. I was able to remove CD drive, and I can get to connector right there. If I will remove the front panel. Uh, however, I'm having an issue. So you see here. Let me. Right here, right, and right here. So these uh, side panels are pressed into the front panel and like locked in. I still didn't completely get how I can like push them apart. Probably just break through this top part. Right, then I would be able to remove front panel, then side panel, and then finally get to the power supply. And it also includes additional board with some additional logic. See, under this heatsink assembly, we have something else. So far, no any single sign of a damage. All right, I also found an original BMW navigation DVD inside. You can see it, but if I will rotate it, yeah, you see, right there. Okay, I will try more. If not, then like I would need like information from the service manual, how to disassemble it and how to move forward. That would be interesting to take a look and try to fix it, but. I'm afraid I don't have enough equipment. <laughs> we'll see.
See ya. Hello everyone. That's not easy, but I'm moving forward. And that's so many modules, like, and the body is like made the way like that you would struggle to disassemble everything. Because um, many points are covered with different like uh, warranty void stickers when you cannot get in where you need to. So I was able to disconnect CD drive from here. And that's another board which connects to this one. So far, I don't see any damage. Everything looks to be pretty fine. The point is that like these units are frequently, as I've been told, they frequently stop communicating via the connection bus to the car. And that's a big problem. And the only place in the world where they've been fixed is a country, Albany. So I'm not sure what else. This board looks fine as well. Usually at this age we, we observe like there are capacitors leaking, there is something else, maybe uh, when I have the water damage, they will get rusty and so on. So far, this board looks to be really in a good shape. I don't see anything I can can talk about so far. But now I would be able to disconnect the lower board, and remove this one. The only thing that is screws, I don't have adapters, as you may see. Let me switch. Closer, you see the screws, and on the lower board we have two of them right here, on top. Others are torque screws, and is accessible, but this is uh, really, really special. All right, and I still like I have so the probably power supply may be root cause, but I need to get there, and I didn't figure out yet. All right, because like this part is moving, but on the left side probably is connected below this board. So I expect there is one or two connection points like screws, which holds it here. It was not easy to get to this stage, trust me. I had to use all my diligence <laughs> uh, that is really, really annoying. Hi, oh, yeah. see you. Okay, sometime I want to scream because like uh, I have this board almost removed, and the only thing which is holes that black wire which gets from this black connector <laughs> and really so these two white pins here how they do it aha uh -huh, this part of connector is separatable really <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> yeah that's been a while all right, all right, another board separated. And as I told you, this black connector is a separate piece which gets inside the bigger one, guy right there. Oh. Really, it's not an easy disassembly. <laughs> Even like for many devices I've been working on, this one probably one of the hardest. All right, we have a little bit left, two boards. Okay, and one small RF board right here. Moving on. Okay guys, finally I have it apart and I will be looking into the boards, trying to see if there are any damage. 
I would not be able to do more without specialized equipment and schematic diagrams. But these old boards are finally separated and we have like empty chassis. So that would be it for this video. I hope you were not frightened how to disassemble this device. Uh, this fancy screw come up with the same uh, Torx driver. It's T8. So it was working for all screws so far. All right. Thank you. Stay tuned for my channel and see you in my next videos. Bye-bye.